What's up, love bugs and love muffins? It's Mama Love, and I'm here with a talk video. Um, <clears throat> I just want to address some things um, that I will not be going into discussing with you all. I'm not putting my stuff out on social media. Not, not giving it to you. But um. I will say this, God is in control of everything. He has our life in his hands. And I wanted to share a scripture with you all. Um, this is a scripture that the Lord had given me um, a while back before uh, CJ was born. We can't plan out our children's life. God does that. And uh, I had planned out Queen's life as far as who, you know, she was going to be with, how she was going to do it, and how she was going to finish school, and how I wanted it. So I thought I wanted it to be done. And, you know, we, we don't own ourselves. We are bought with a price. We are bought and paid for with a price. We belong to God. So therefore, any child that I birth uh, belongs to God. So therefore, all my children are in the hands of God. Um, they acted up. God got it, you know. Um, I have to continue to do that. But anyway, I had it planned out how I wanted her to finish school because she was an A and B student and I wanted her to um, go to college, then get married and have a baby. I wanted this order, which kind of had, I had my nerve because it's like uh, I didn't do it in that order, you know, but um, I wanted the best for my kids, you know, I wanted them to be better than me. You know, because a lot of people say, well, how you doing? did you do that? No, I didn't. That's why I wanted mine to do that. I want mine to be better than me. I always wanted it. I always told my kids, I'll be better than me. But anyways, and well, she found out she was pregnant with him. She just found out. And um, I was like, well, we going up here to this hospital and you, you about to get an abortion, you know, because this ain't the plan that I had for your life. You know, this is what the Lord had given me <clears throat> um, in the bathroom in my old home on Euclid. He he said to me in Jeremiah 29 and 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So I'm going to read it again. He said, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. And what I took out of that scripture was, he declares that. He said, for I know the plans. It's my plan, not your plan. That's what God was saying to me. I got a big picture for you. I, I know the big picture is what he's saying. I know the big pictures <clears throat> in your life, whether you're going to prosper or whether you're going to fail. But this plan right here that you're trying to destroy, which the life that I have created, that you will prosper and you will have a good future, which you are about to destroy, something you didn't even have anything to do with but what I God had I give life I take it away and that's what the Lord was saying to me when I call myself um wanting this for Queen and uh I look at my grandchild today and um the closeness and bond that I have with him um it's, it's so amazing because it's like um I dream about this child before Queen was pregnant. 
And I remember saying, um, Queen, so, so, somebody pray because, you know, I, I, uh, I dream about a baby that I'm, I, I, this baby was like my baby, but it wasn't my baby. I was real close to this baby. I was holding this child, changing his diaper, um, and, 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 and comforting, nourishing this baby. But this wasn't my baby. So what possible, how in the world possible can a baby be close to you as a mother, but you're not the mother? Couldn't be nothing but a grandchild. Because that's how a grandmother is. A grandmother is close to the to a child. They're, they're, they're real close and bond. But that child that your child has, it's the bond there. Now, it's not going to be close like a mother and a child. But it can be. But still, that's my daughter's child. That's what I'm trying to say. But the bond that was there that I had with him. Those brought forth the, the future now that I have with him. And he'll be four years old. He's been on this earth for four years. And I thank God, February February 17th, he will be on this earth for four years. And I'm thanking and praising God each day for his life and uh, his future. Um, I'm talking about him because, you know, a grandchild is very special and we as uh, adults, we have the right to that when we birth our children, we have a right to say so, say over uh, who can see him and who can't. We have that right, that God given right. And that's, and that's fine. If you think that harm is going to be brought to your baby, um, that, that, that's fine. That's understandable. Whether you want, whether you're doing it by grudge, or whether you're doing it by worry, um, you have that right. Um, I had that right with my kids. I didn't want my kids to be made differences in my kids, so I took my kids and separated them as far as from people that are was uh, comparing them, especially my daughters, comparing them all the time. So I kept my daughters with me. I really didn't have them around uh, people. My my kids fool with who I fool with. You know, if, if I fool with you, my kids fool with you. Uh, if I kind of standoffish and you know find out that you wasn't a friend that I thought you were, my kids don't fool with you. That's just how it goes. You know, and uh, not that I made them do that, but it was just like, no, nah, my mama don't fool with you. I ain't fooling with you. That's just how my, you know, kids are with the close bond. But I had said that to say the scripture that God has given me. That scripture alone by itself, for I know the plans that I have for your life, is the reason why today that I don't panic in anything that God is doing. I don't care how the picture may seem. I don't care how the devil may make it look. Um, I don't care what people say. You know, um, I believe God. And this is why I'm always calm. This is why I'm always, you know, letting the Lord fight my battles. I think before I speak, this is why I keep silent a lot because a lot of times um, I'm not running. Um, a lot of times I keep silent because I'm seeking the Lord. Um, I'm doing what he wants me to do. And um, if the Lord say be silent on the subject, then that's what I'm going to do because God knows all and he sees all. And so um, when I'm silent, I'm simply um, giving it to God and I'm giving God control of the situation. I just thank and praise the Lord, though, that uh, my daughter came out um, uh, healthy and her baby is healthy. And I thank God for that. I thank God that I was able to be there for her and with her at the time. Um, I'm thanking and praising God for a fast, speedy recovery that she's had. Um, and it's done. You know, it's done. Um, She's good. Um, God answered the prayers. Um, and I knew she was going to be all right. You know, I was just, you know, worried about um, things, you know, you know, we all worried about, you know, childbearing years and stuff like that. And also like with the postpartum, you know, uh, I pray about that as well. So you don't have to be around someone to uh, for God to get a prayer, to, to get a prayer through God, because God is everywhere. 
He is omnipresent. He is everywhere at the same time. So I don't have to be in my child's presence to lay hands on her to say, Lord, cover her in the name of Jesus. I can just go send out a word and say, Lord God, cover her in the name of Jesus, you know, and she'll be covered because God said my word to go out and it shall not return unto me void. And that's what he meant when he said that. When you when you call a thing, speak those things. It's not as though they were. It, it comes to pass. And I speak life. I spoke life over my child and I speak happiness over her right now. I speak peace over her in the name of Jesus. Um, that everything is going to work out. You know, that uh, uh, snares and obstacles and uh, stumbling blocks that may be in her way um, that, uh, you know, God remove. Remove anything that's not like you in her life that is going to cause her to fall or be traumatized or uh, sick. And, uh, and mentally, whether it's health, physically, in any type of way, that she be covered in the blood of Jesus. And that's all I can do is send my prayers out. And I just thank God for you all. I thank um, God for uh, the support um, that you all have showed. Um, I block all negativity out. Um, I don't even focus on it because I feel like there's too much going on in the world to worry about you know, what people have to say negative, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, you know yourself, you know, that what's going on, you know, nobody really knows what's going on. They just surmise and it don't really help. Like I said, when a person is silent and I like to keep silent because like I said, you know, it's in God's hands because we can speak on something and say how it's going to be. And then you can go to pray, pray to God and God to turn that situation around. And um, so that's what I'm doing. And uh, however the situation go, to God be the glory. Um, however the situation goes, let God's will be done. Let your will be done, God. Not my will, but your will be done in my life. And so when I when I when I hear Jeremiah 29 and 11, I get excited because I know that my God is not a liar. He is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. And I think. And praise him for never failing me, for always being with me and my, by my side, even at my lowest moments where I felt like times I felt like giving up. And when I mean almost at the verge of a nervous breakdown, almost to the uh, edge where, you know, I thought I was going to lose my mind, like kind of like cuckoo for Cocoa Pops. I'm telling you, like my tongue was just going to fall out my mouth and my eyes was just going to go round and round. Those are the stages that I was in in my life that God has kept me. God is keeping our minds day by day. We don't know what God is keeping us from. That's why we need to thank and praise God for each day that he has uh, bestowed on us. And I thank God for each day. I thank God for all his blessings. I thank God for, um, and many more to come. You know, I just want to do God's will and I want to put, um, my life in God's hand and let his will become, my will become his will, not my permissive will, but my, but his will, his will be done. That's the most important. The most important thing here in my life is that I'm pleasing God, that I am doing what God wants me to do, that I am doing what God has me to do, that I keep myself humble, that I don't act unseemly and foolish in no type of way, that I don't take things in my own hands, but I, I, I lean on God. I trust in the Lord in all my ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct my path. And I lean not on to, to my own understanding, but I'm yielding and leaning to God. He's going to give me strength. He's going to give me strength. I'm going to mount up with wings. I'm going to do that. That's what the scripture says. And he's going to keep me. He's going to keep me as long as I'm pleasing him and doing his, his ways. Because obedience is better than sacrifice. And I'd rather obey God than man. And I want to make sure that I am not in the wrong, that I am in the right. And as long as I know that, there is peace within me to know that God, he has my back and everything is going to be all right. And I just wanted to say that to y'all. I'm just basically saying to you all that I am okay, that I'm all right, that my heart is covered, that uh, God mended my heart. He has me in his hands. Can't no man pluck me out. Can't nobody tell you that you don't belong to God. Can't nobody tell you that you're a child, you're not a child of God. Don't you let no man tell you that you're not a child of God, especially when you've been all the things that you have been through and God has brought you through. You the one praying on your knees. Don't nobody knows what's in our heart 
but God, we don't even know our own heart. The heart is, God said the heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it but God? And if God knows your heart, then can't no man tell you that God, uh, you're not you're not serving God and you're 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 uh you're fake or whatever however the case may be and what's most important God knows God knows where you are so never judge a person because you never know what what their intentions are you never know what in a, a prayer they didn't pray you don't know they didn't got it right with God you don't know you don't know you don't know somebody you don't judge somebody's you know weaknesses and stuff like that's for God to judge and put together um, and bring somebody and give, give strength to that and deliver somebody from that. That's none of our business. But I just want to thank and praise God and I know who I am. I know who I am in God. I am a strong woman of God. He has kept me. I have kept myself humble and I'm just waiting for the exaltation because it's coming. And I just want y'all to wait on that. And I want y'all to see before your eyes as y'all see this video of my speaking on it, God is going to exalt me. I, he is. And uh, he said that when my enemies encamped about around me to take me down, to come against me, they stumbled and fell. And God is not a liar. God is not a liar. He is going to keep me and um, I'm standing strong. And I just want to let y'all know that. And thank you for your concern and everything. And I just want to say, remember Jeremiah 29 and 11? For I know, God says, I know. I declare the Lord for the plans that I have for your life in hopes of a good future and that you prosper. And I want that to be the word for all of y'all today, the prosper. In the name of Jesus, be blessed.